G'day guys, how's it going? So in this little video here, uh, I'm gonna make a new frog enclosure. So stick around, hope you enjoy. So as I mentioned in the last video, I uh, put the boids into the enclosure that I was planning to put my frogs into. So I need to put the frogs in, in some sort of enclosure. I did have them in this uh, 45 by 45 by 60 Reptile 1 tank. Um, and that's gonna be actually plenty of space for them, but I just had it set up super basic, and I actually just wanna kinda, of, you know, turn it into something really nice. The main thing I wanna do is I actually wanna turn the whole bottom of this tank into a water feature pond, if you wanna call it. Um, reason for that is, A, I haven't given these frogs that kind of opportunity in the past, and B, I actually wanna give these guys a crack at breeding, so, you know, best way to do it is to actually have a decent amount of water in your enclosure. Um, Recently, I've actually also picked up some other frogs that I'm housing in with the the green stream frogs. So I've also got some um, uh, crinia, some common eastern froglets. So just little tiny frogs that nobody really cares all that too much about. But um, I'm just going to house them all together in this tank. Um, I've kind of been mucking around with the positions of tanks in this bioactive gecko rack. So this little tank's actually going to go right next to where the, the roller door is over the back there just to make water changing easier. If I need to give it a bit of a change, it's like, you know, a meter hose out onto the lawn, so it's not gonna be any effort at all. Um, yeah, the more convenient I can make maintenance, the, the more likely anybody's gonna be able to do it. You know, if it's easy, you're gonna do it. If it becomes such a big chore, it just becomes a hassle, so you're never gonna do it. So anyway, I'm gonna kick on with this. But yeah, I'm gonna have a bit of fun putting it all together. We'll see how we go. Until you have a stroke I've got their little enclosure together now. You got some pretty basic plants in there. Hopefully their root systems go okay because essentially they are submerged in water just through the gravel. I just made sure to wash all the soil and stuff out from between them. I'm just going to add a dechlorinator into the water. I just use Seachem's Prime. The reason you want to do that for frogs is because chlorine is not good for frogs and it will kill them pretty quick. Pretty much the only other thing that I want to do to this little Enclosure. Just add a couple of gum leaves in there, and pretty much over the land portion, not really anywhere else. Might actually just crumble them up a little bit, make it a little bit finer. We've just got a super basic little filter in there. It's just one of these little Aqualine Mini 300 Fs basically just a sponge cartridge through there so it's not like a really comprehensive type of filtration but it's just going to keep the water from getting stagnant and turning it over at least a little bit but um yeah it's come together pretty nicely i'm not going to really worry about cleanup crew in here as such because there's not a lot of land area this is more just to have water in there to actually stimulate the frogs to hopefully breed we'll see how we go anyway even you know, it's all trial by error sometimes. I think these plants are going to do okay, pretty much submerged in water, but time will tell. I know I've done like pothos before, 
submerge with their roots in water. But I thought I'd give the philodendron a go and pile a palm and yeah, we'll just see how we go anyway. But yeah, I might get these little guys into it and see what they think. So I'm going to actually start putting some more plants into a few other enclosures where I've just trialled some and they've you know died off or whatever. But I went down and got a whole more bunch, a whole bunch more today rather. And I need to clean up a couple of these gecko enclosures anyway, so I'm going to freshen off this whole rack, I reckon. Here's some of these frogs, green streams, a few little crinia, a combination of froglets. I'm going to pop all these guys in now. And we'll uh, probably come back at night to see them a little less stressed, because obviously they're nice and dark now, but usually those guys are bright green and the little crinia are pretty nice little um, kind of greys and browns and things. But yeah, we'll pop them all in now. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. There you can jump. Whee! <laughs> well, I've just finished cleaning up all these tanks. They're looking pretty fresh now too. I reckon they're looking pretty nice. Excuse the water bottles and feed bottles and stuff like that, but all the leaf tail geckos along there with then some pair of velvets in the end one. The frogs are down in that corner now. Got some wipe over leaf tails in that one. And some more velvets in that tank there. And up the top. Got the thick tail geckos in this little tank. And then over here we've got the uh, little beaded geckos. But yeah, definitely starting to come along. Really enjoying this tank. I've already heard frogs croaking in it while I was cleaning everything else, so somebody seems to be happy. Might be these little guys down here. And yeah, hopefully we'll come back and grab some footage during the night with them all hopping around and maybe even croaking and doing their thing. And we'll see what the geckos are up to. I've even put some more plants into the little Boyd's Forest Dragons enclosure as well. Something else I did which is a little bit nerdy. So I actually put a little aquarium fan up the top there that's connected up to a cooling thermostat. So I grab the probe. I'll just try to warm it up and click it on. It shouldn't take too long. There we go. So when it gets too warm inside this enclosure, it kicks on the little fan. Just helps stimulate a bit of a breeze through here to hopefully cool it down a little bit. As most of you know, my garage can get pretty warm, so I figure at least if I've got, I've got that in there, it's a little bit of a redundancy. The last thing I want to do is hurt the little guy. But yeah, I added in a big pile of palm right in the back there, which is filled in a ton of space. Which is fantastic. I also got a few dead palm frond leaves. Yeah, this little enclosure looks awesome. It's already eaten again for me, little guy. He's such a cute little guy. Well, this rack's looking absolutely fantastic now. 
I'm gonna have to come back at night and get some shots of the actual animals because of course all these animals are nocturnal. I've also gone ahead and actually hooked up the timer to the, the Miss King system for this. So I've got a drum of RODI water there. I'll see if I can just manually turn it on to show you it on. Kicking into gear and spraying those three gecko enclosures. It's gonna help with watering the, the plants and everything in there. And I think I've gotta hopefully contact somebody who might have some more nozzles hanging around as well. So hopefully I'll be able to get a few more hooked up to um, in particular these leafies and the frogs. I probably won't worry about the velvet geckos or the thick tail geckos or the beaded geckos of course, but just the more rainforest dwelling species. This little enclosure is looking fantastic though. I reckon that came together really good. I've heard the frogs croaking a few times already today, which I haven't heard them do that for a little while. So I'm hoping to come in later tonight and see more swimming about and being very happy. So if you've made it this far guys, thanks for sticking around and checking out all these little bioactive tanks that I've been setting up over the last uh, uh, few months or so. Um, yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give it a share, give it a like, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for some more content. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.